Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching Saudi Channel's line and have the top stories. We are tracking for you on Monday, the 16th of December. PM Modi inaugurates Global Renewable Energy Investors Meet targets 500 gigawatts by 2030. Sri Lanka's presidential election key to crisis rebound. And Nepalis worship pre-pubescent girls for good luck and wellness. And now for all the details, while addressing the inaugural day of the fourth Global Renewable Energy Investors League in Gandhi Nagar, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday said that the country is determined to build a sustainable energy path forward and that the focus is on solar power, wind power, nuclear and hydropower to secure the future. Modi said not only Indians but the world believes that India is the best bet of the 21st century. The Prime Minister highlighted the efforts towards achieving the target of 500 gigawatts by 2030. He said that the reinvest is not an isolated event, but part of a larger vision and action plan to make India a developed nation by 2047. PM Modi emphasized the central government's welfare initiatives in the first 100 days of the third term and said he had made very significant decisions to support green energy. The central theme of Reinvest 2024 is Mission 500 Gigawatts, which underscores India's strategic goal to expand its renewable energy capacity significantly by 2030. As the fourth largest country globally in installed renewable energy capacity, India aims to further consolidate its leadership in the global energy transition. Let us immerse ourselves in this. Bharat, in the summer, 31,000 megawatt hydro power generate करने के लिए भी काम कर रहा है। इसके लिए 12,000 करोड़ रुपए से अधिक अप्रूव किए गए हैं। साथियों, भारत की डायवर्सिटी, भारत की स्केल, भारत की कैपेसिटी, भारत का पोटेंशियल भारत की परफॉर्मेंस ये सब यूनिक है इसलिए मैं कहता हूं इंडियन सॉल्यूशंस फॉर ग्लोबल एप्लीकेशन एंड द कंट्रोवर्शियल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट्स मेड बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ have been postponed indefinitely, Geo News has reported quoting ruling alliance leader Senator Irfan Siddiqui. The development comes after the government failed to garner support for the proposed tweaks to the constitution. The country witnessed marathon meetings with both Treasury and opposition rushing to JUI chief Fazalur Rahman, whose party has eight lawmakers, the key number required by the government to have two-third majority for making the constitutional amendments. According to media reports, the proposed amendments, including changes in articles governing the appointment and tenures of justices. The government proposed it will become the final authority for the appointment of Chief Justice of Pakistan, a major shift from the current policy where a judicial commission makes the appointments. The controversial amendments also included creation of a separate constitutional court handling cases related to constitutional matters, raising questions on its nature and relationship with the Supreme Court. The main opposition PTI labelled the amendments as an ambush on the judiciary and said they should only be introduced in the best interest of the country rather than for personal gain. Moving on. Protests have erupted in Gilgit, Baltistan over a severe fraud crisis and recent cuts to essential subsidies, leaving many families struggling to afford basic food items. A report. Scores of locals along with members of the Awami Action Committee in Pakistan-occupied Gilgit, Baltistan, recently took to the streets to protest ongoing flour crisis and subsidy cuts. 
protesters warned that if their demands are not met, they will escalate to larger demonstrations to restore subsidies on 32 essential items. For many families, subsidized flour is critical to keeping food costs manageable, and its subsidy reduction further strains their already limited budgets. The chief secretary and other officials have yet to comment on the matter. Jab tak hamari purani notification jo hui thi farwari ke mahine mein jo January mein humne darna diya tha Awami Action Committee ne, us pe ham jab tak ye avoid nahi karenge, ham usko nahi mante. In in abhi tak hai. Jab jab tak hamara jari rahega, jab tak notification hamara 12 kilo ka jab tak nahi jari karenge dobara aur ham se maafi nahi mangenge awam se. ये चीफ सेक्रेटरी बैठा हुआ है नया चीफ सेक्रेटरी आया है इसको बावर करा दें कि भाई इधर हम उसके दफ्तर के आसपास कह रही है ये अनदर प्रोटेस्टर एम्फसाइज्ड द वाइडर क्राइसिस इन पीओजीबी साइटिंग गवर्नमेंट नेगलिजेंस इन एड्रेसिंग क्रिटिकल इश्यूज सच एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी क्लीन ड्रिंकिंग वाटर एंड अदर एसेंशियल सर्विसेज मैं इनके पास इलाज है मैं इनके पास تعلیم है मैं इनके पास जनाब अली कोई साफ सुथरा जो पानी है मैं इनके पास बिजली है मैं इनके पास कोई معیاری تعلیم है यानी कुछ भी नहीं सारा जो है बहरान है तो मैं ये समझता हूं कि ये छोटे-छोटे आज हुकूमत ये ना समझे कि ये छोटे-छोटे احتجاجات है जगह-जगह पर कल ये सारे मिलेंगे और एक्शन कमेटी के काल पर हम फिर वही धरना हम हम लगाएंगे और उस वक्त हमारा एक आटे का मुतालबा नहीं होगा एंड विद द प्रेसिडेंशियल इलेक्शन जस्ट डेज अवे श्रीलंकाज इकोनॉमिक लैंडस्केप कंटीन्यूज टू स्ट्रगल विद द एफ्टरमैथ ऑफ अ डीप फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस from the impact on local businesses to the broader political implications, residents believe this crucial vote could shape the nation's recovery. A report. With days ahead of presidential election in Sri Lanka, residents of the island nation have said the polls will be a key to crisis rebound. Tourists have started returning to Sri Lanka, which business owners like Tariq Naseem say is a good sign for people like him, though he laments that their numbers do not match up to pre-pandemic figures. Naseem's Dairy King, which sells 22 flavors of homemade ice cream, was just one of thousands of businesses crushed by the crisis that erupted after foreign exchange fell to critical lows, squeezing imports of essentials from fuel to fertilizer. With the economic crisis, we have not picked up any more, he added. The economic crisis, we have not picked up anymore because the cost factor has gone three times more. And since then, still we have not increased our cost of the product, the selling price. We are just holding it, uh, expecting with the, like the, some kind of price reduction. I mean, the states will come uh, for the milk products and the electricity. So we are trying to cover our cost and uh, profit on that. Sri Lanka's economic crisis erupted after the island's dollar reserves depleted, leaving it unable to buy essentials including fuel, fertilizer and machines. Protests forced former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee the country and later resign. Following this, incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe took over the reins and charted a tentative recovery underpinned by a $2.9 billion IMF program and a $25 billion foreign debt restructuring bringing about single-digit inflation and interest rates. But the relative stability may be put to the test when 17 million Sri Lankans head to the polls on September 21 to elect a president for the next five years. Voters are likely to pick a winner from winnowed down list that comprises Vikramasinghe, Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and Marxist leaning parliamentarian Anura Kumara Desanayake. Presidential hopefuls are facing the first political litmus test since the financial crisis, with analysts struggling to pick a front runner. Moving on, a team of US delegates on Sunday met Bangladesh interim chief Head Mohammad Yunus and assured him of expanding economic and political ties to create a more equitable and inclusive future for the people in the South Asian country. The delegation said that the United States is willing to provide an additional $202 million of aid and is committed to support inclusive economic growth in Bangladesh. Chief Advisor Yunus said the government was appealing for $5 U.S. billion in aid to help stabilize an economy that has been struggling 
since the Ukraine was sharply increased the cost of fuel and food imports. Bangladesh last year sought a $4.7 billion IMF bailout. The US was one of the first countries to welcome installation of UNIS and this is the first delegation from Washington to visit Bangladesh following the formation of the interim government on August 8. Hundreds of prepubescent girls in Nepal, donned regalia-like, the living goddess Kumari took part in rituals to please goddess Taleju Bhavani and seek her blessings on Monday. Take a look. Donned in regalia alike the living goddess Kumari, more than 500 girls from the Nevar community in Nepal, in their pre-pubescent, performed special rituals on Monday to please and seek the blessings from goddess Taleju Bhavani to ward off bad luck and diseases. Locally called Kumari Puja, this special ritual is held annually and is performed in front of the Taleju Bhavani temple in Kathmandu. It is believed that girls taking part in this ritual would not have any health problems. Nepal has a unique tradition of worshipping the living goddess who is appointed in certain interval of time following strict selection process. Kumari Puja is so that we have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the Living goddess Kumari is believed to have come to the earth in the human form and is also regarded as Hindu goddess of protection and strength Durga. The goddess is worshipped with great reverence and even the Shah kings followed the tradition of receiving Tika or sacred vermilion mark and blessings from her. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.